Hi everyone, welcome to our talk. Today's talk, we will introduce our use case in Strat Streaming and how we revive and enhance the Strat Streaming features. I'm Liang Qi Xie, I'm a Spark committer focusing in SQL and Strat Streaming. I'm also a software engineer at Apple. Welcome to connect through my GitHub and LinkedIn profiles. And I am Christine, and I'm also a software engineer at Apple. I currently focus on cl cloud platform technologies, and I'm working on developing high-scale backend systems. You are also welcome to connect with me on LinkedIn as well. In today's agenda, first we will talk about how we revive previous trust streaming effort in the community. Next, we talk about uh, how we plan a new enhancement to trust streaming feature. And then last, we talk about our use case. There are some features in Strat Streaming that matter to us, including new building state store, session window, and state full test scheduling enhancement, and also checkpoint enhancement. First, uh, we will talk about how we revive previous Strat Streaming effort. There are some features in uh, Strat Streaming uh, there, um, there are some uh, previous effort in the community working on that, but unfortunately, they are not in the spark in the end. Driven by our use case, we want to revive these useful features in Strat Stream. First, let's talk about a state store. What is a state store? State store is a component used for state uh, management in Strat Streaming for stateful operators like a streaming aggregation join. Um, for this stateful operator, they can get pull key value pairs on state store. In each micro batch, state store will checkpoint states to distributed file system. In case of a job value, Spark can reload the checkpoint state back to state store. So far, there's only one building state store in Spark. It's a HDF spec state store. It still stays in an in-memory map and also checkpoint to HDF's comparable file system. So there's some um, dis disadvantages uh, on this building state store. First, it is limited by the executor memory. So it's obviously is not good for large state use case. And even you have enough memory, it could also impact other uh, task due to the memory issue. So it sounds like we need a new building state store. We are going to revive a drugs DB based state store as another building state store in Strat Streaming. Why? Because there are more and more streaming applications requiring large state. And we also know that RocksDB is widely used in the industry. So we created a task Spark 34198A to end the RocksDB state store as an external module. And we receive all the positive response from the community. We revisited some um, current open source RocksDB state store implementation. Currently there are two, two implementation. One is, is from Germany and one is from Kubo. The Kubo one is also the one uh, previous work uh, submit pull, pull request to Spark. The good news is we know that the data break want to open source their internal RocksDB state store in the future. It is ongoing work. So we run a simple benchmark on current open source RocksDB state store. The number shows Quibo one is somehow faster than a Germanin. So currently we use the Quibo one in internal experiment. We will run a benchmark on Databricks open source implementation in the future. Next, let's talk about the session window. 
Swap streaming support a kind of a window operation called even win even time window. It's basically group event to a fixed uh, window. But there's, there's another kind of a window operation called session window. It group a event to different session by the distance between the event. Each session is separated by a so-called session gap. Previously, there's also another effort in Spark Strat Streaming to add a session window. It is Spark 10816, event time-based sessionization, but it is not in the Spark 2. And this ticket keeps inactive in last few years. So we know that uh, uh, session window, this feature is, it is available in other streaming engine, but it is missing at the trust streaming in last few years. Driven by our use case, we want to revive this feature as a building window feature. Let's talk about uh, something about the session window internal. Session window, um, has some manipulation state like a uh, session initialization, restoring, merging, and saving. All these operations depend on internal state store format. We want the state store to be able to efficiently retrieve our st session state for a specific session key, and also be able to partially update the start time and duration of the affected windows. So far, there are three candidate internal state store format. First one is a thing is the most simple, is the simplest one. It's very easy to implement. You can see it just need one state store. Keep the session key and a list a list of the session as value. But as it uh, as it store all the state as a long list, it could have some memory issue if you have too many session per value. And also it does not support partial update. The second one is so-called double list approach. It needs three states to uh, handle the states. Uh, first one is the session key and uh, the earliest start time. And the second state store use the key and the start time uh, and the start and the double list between the start time per key. And the last one store the key and start each start time as, as the state store key. And the value is the actual session window. The good, good thing about this approach is it does not to store a list. So there is no complex stru structure. And it is efficient to traverse. But uh, however, uh, this structure is more, more complicated and is harder to maintain. The last one is um, to use two state store. First one is using a session key and the start time list as the uh, value. And the second state store use the key and the each start time to uh, match to each session window. Also, we still need to store a list of session start time, but as it just the start time, so um, we can be fine uh, from the memory issue here. Currently, we implement the list state store format and co-work with the community on the session window pull request. Next, let's talk about a new enhancement we plan to trust streaming. First one is a state for task scheduling enhancement. We know that a Spark task scheduling is not designed for state for task. State store location in each micro batch is, is assigned arbitrarily. So 
The change of the state store in next micro batch could cause frequent reload from the remote file system. So it, it is an obstacle of a future checkpoint enhancement in our feature works. To address this feature, to address this issue, we propose a few possible approaches. First one is leverage existing data locality preference as a simple workaround. And the second one, we propose to cu customize the Spark task scheduling behavior. We want to add a plugin API to Spark. So once the new resource overcoming and Spark test scheduler want to schedule task, our, our plugin can suggest the scheduling preference to the scheduler and to ask Spark to schedule task four as, our, uh, as, our, uh, as the expectation we need. So how the task scheduling plugin might work? If in the micro batch N, four states are scheduled on four different executors. Then in the next batch N plus one, our scheduling plugin wants to schedule the state at the same executor as the previous batch. So Spark don't need to reload the state from HDSS back to executor state store. Next, let's talk about how we use this feature in our use case. Hi, so thank you to Liangqi for walking us through um, all these new enhancements to structured streaming. Now I'd like to take this chance to talk at a high level about a use case at Apple that is in part motivated and in the future will utilize all of these new features. So this use case uses a dual stream model where we have two data streams reading from the same data source. Uh, this data source consists of rows that are then assigned to application defined batches. These batches are assigned um, in the original data source and importantly, they are dynamic in both their count and the duration through which they will be written to the two streams. After each of the two individual data streams processes and aggregates these batches, we then want to utilize a stream stream join to match the aggregates between these two streams to perform the final processing. Importantly here, because we are trying uh, to process the one data source in two different streams, we must account for potential lag between the streams. So here is a high level schematic of the use case that I am talking about. So as you can see, we have a single data source with custom batch UIDs. These rows are then written to two parallel servers, both of which will aggregate over those batches. And then finally, those aggregates will be joined later downstream based off of this batch. So a few things that makes this server architecture uh, important is that we have a relatively high throughput. We are expecting petabytes of data per day. Furthermore, we have a high RPS as well on the order of tens of thousands of uh, data coming in uh, at once. The size of the data is also varying, ranging from one kilobyte in size to one megabyte in size. And finally, all of these factors together lead to exerting high memory pressure at the stream stream join. So the state store will be important here. Luckily, Spark Structure Streaming with existing as well as with these future enhancements will be able to handle a lot of these different challenges. For example, accounting for potential lag is already solved by an existing feature, which is watermarking. To handle the dynamic batch aggregation, rather, rather than relying on fixed uh, time intervals or fixed count intervals, instead, we are going to use the session windows that Leonchi just talked about. And finally, to help with the stream stream join pressure, 
we are going to be moving to a RocksDB based state store. So thank you. Hopefully you were able to draw insight from the new enhancements and features that we have planned for structured streaming, as well as how they can relate to actual use cases at a high level. Your feedback is very important to us, so please feel free to reach out at any point and do not forget to rate and review the sessions as well. We are now happy to answer any questions. Thank you.